So good afternoon, everyone. We are now going to be covering the current tax landscape with a focus on COVID-19 and MTD. This is brought to you by Avalara. And today there'll be three of us presenting to you. It is myself, Ruby Buckland, and I'm a director of sales in EMEA. I'll also be joined by Richard Asquith, who's our VP of Global Indirect Tax, and Eileen Kane, who's a VAT Solutions Manager for Avalara. So just a little bit about Avalara. For those of you that haven't come across us before, we are a business specialising in cloud-based tax automation to help businesses of all sizes with transactional tax calculation, registrations and filing globally. We have 2,500 employees worldwide with approximately 200 of those uh, based out of Europe. And we have 12 offices across the world, including US, Europe, South America and Asia. Our core focus is for customers to use our applications through their existing business solutions, whether that's for accounting, ERP, point of sale, reoccurring billing, or CRM systems. We then link into these systems so that you can manage your tax compliance through our software solutions for tax. We work closely with Millennium Consulting and Unit 4 on various technology projects. So what is our agenda today? So we're going to be covering COVID-19, and the related global tax breaks that will be done by Richard. Then Eileen and I will go over the latest on making tax digital and the recent announcements that were made. We have got quite a packed agenda today, so I'm afraid we will not be able to cover Brexit as we're a little short on time. We did, however, host a webinar recently on Brexit, which you can watch on demand on our website, and we've listed the site for you here so that you can access that. So first off, we're gonna kick off with Richard, who will be joining us to talk about the latest impact of COVID-19 and this will take about 15 minutes or so. We'll then be doing a quick update on the timeline for making tax digital and that will take about 10 minutes and then we'll move on to questions from the audience. Please do send in your questions to us. We're here throughout the presentation and we've got a few extra staff as well on hand to help answer your questions. Thank you and over to you Richard. Right, uh, hello everybody um, and uh, firstly my best wishes to everybody hope you're all safe and well and enjoying the quality time that we are all getting to spend intensive quality time that we're all getting to spend with our uh, families and uh, my job uh, particularly in this context is a very interesting time is, is is i spend a lot of time reading all the legislation when i should be reading 19th century romantic novels uh, during this free period of time but uh, what i do with that is obviously apart from uh, trying to explain to everybody uh, what's coming up uh, in terms of COVID and all the measures that we'll look at today. Um, but trying to explain to our, our technology people and our service people who help businesses around the world who have to get that registered, complete returns, interest that, uh, control statements, e-invoices, et cetera, et cetera, uh, how, how to plan for that. And a huge amount of time now is because we're in overdrive, as you'll shortly see with the measures. Uh, generally, we see about one interesting piece of news a day uh, traditionally in the past year and that's in the full flight of uh, EU uh, VAT reforms uh, etc etc but at the moment it's probably at about four or five times that level with the number of measures that are coming out and uh, crucially we spend uh, myself and our team we spend a lot of time making sure all the measures that we'll look at today are in our services and products so it's one less thing for you to uh, to worry about now, um, as I mentioned, uh, myself and our team and my, my team here at Avalar, we spend a huge amount of time tracking uh, all the changes and uh, we keep a helpful live tracker uh, on, up online. So if you look for Avalar COVID-19, that, uh, as you see on the screen, you'll see our blog, which is uh, updated daily with. Uh, uh, so if you want to follow up on any of the measures that, uh, that I touch on, on and how it affects your particular country, I'd recommend uh, you go there first. Right, so what are governments uh, doing? Now, this is an interesting slide because um, I did a, a WebEx a couple of weeks ago on COVID covering these areas and um, I uh, did a slide which I dusted off uh, last night in preparation for this and it had about 10 measures and this slide that you now see here, as you can see, it's ballooned to probably about 25 to 30 uh, measures in the past few weeks. And um, what governments now are doing, the way we've bucketed it, as you can see, is across three measures. Firstly, to give 
uh, cash flow uh, boost for businesses that have obviously lost, losing huge amounts, huge proportions of their turnover. Then trying to make tax simpler through the administration system. And then uh, stage three, and this is the one that's um, going to be growing and becoming more important. How can um, governments use the tax regime, the VAT regime in particular, to prop up uh, businesses to give them long, uh, long-term long boosts. So in terms of just reviewing and calling out the interesting ones on the cash flow, it's obviously about extensions uh, on VAT payments. And there've been all sorts of uh, different provisions and I'll touch on those in a minute uh, for, for different countries, how they're, how they're working, uh, etc. cetera. Um, but also there's things like speeding up uh, back credits and uh, moving towards cash-based VAT regimes, which is one that's just picking up uh, popularity at the moment. Um, the, w w what is interesting is you see uh, some clever VAT nerd or policy wonk coming up with a new policy and that catches on in the different jurisdictions. So the favorite measure du jour at the moment is VAT loans. Um, and we've seen them in Europe and now they're popping up in Europe. So uh, Finland is the latest. And what that is, is it's a refund, uh, a short-term refund of any VAT that you've already paid in 2020. So for example, for your June or February uh, returns, and you can apply to have that refunded on a short-term uh, basis, or often interest-free. So it's just a very effective uh, cash loan into businesses. It bypasses the normal schemes, banking schemes, which are Proved um, uh, or pr not been as successful as governments or as quick as governments would have uh, wanted. So that's why that one, I think we'll see a lot more of that. In terms of uh, admin, obviously deferring uh, filings is the first option, but what governments now are trying to do is, um, because they're short staffed and uh, focused elsewhere, is uh, suspend um, audits and uh, assessments. But long term, I think it's around dropping the requirements for paper-based proof of uh, invoices, whether it's um, whether it's for de deductibility or for your uh, customers, uh, etc. And you sense a real urge to progress, I think, from the tax authorities uh, to, towards digital documentation and e-signatures. Uh, and then lastly, as I mentioned, the one that's uh, going to be more long term, it's, it's using VAT to give a permanent support to businesses with their bottom line. And that's mostly about extending or easing the right to deduct VAT on things like um, entertainment or sensitive expenditure. Um, but uh, the big one that we haven't seen much of, I think will come, is uh, loosening the rules on uh, bad debts and actual uh, uh, VAT forgiveness. So in addition, in addition to specific measures, um, they're being cut across uh, several different planes. So uh, firstly, it's support for particular industries. My favorite, my, the most curious one I've seen is Turkey giving a back cut to airlines, which are exactly the type of services that we shouldn't be using or shouldn't be getting uh, on. Um, but most of the measures we have seen are being targeted specifically at uh, small enterprises. So the tip, most of the measures will come with a threshold. If you're below a certain level of uh, turnover, then you you cannot take advantage of the, um, of the measure, which is confusing um, because every Every country introduces a different measure applicable to different industries, uh, to different sizes of businesses. So it's challenging to keep uh, a track of that. And also a controversial one is countries are split whether they'll allow foreign businesses with a local VAT registration to take advantage of um, these measures. It is uh, it is largely uh, illegal uh, in the EU uh, and, uh, uh, under the um EU uh, single market uh, rules to offer national businesses an unfair advantage. Um, but some states have been going ahead. In fact, most of them have gone ahead. Right. So what's going to change uh, in the future as we get towards? Um, we've just got a couple more slides now. Uh, as I touched on at the beginning, uh, governments, they're, they're, they're in three phases uh, at the moment. When, when you listen into how they're planning and we get consulted at Avalara quite a bit on this by by different organizations. They, um, first of all, it's immediate emergency measures, so defer the, uh, defer the VAT return or defer the payment. Then it's medium term, so it's cash flow, um, cash flow measures, uh, VAT loans, as I've already talk, talked about. Phase three is long term, and um, there are lists bouncing around between the governments, between the commission, uh, between the OECD, et cetera, about what government should be doing for the long term. So that could be just for 12 months, and it could be, um, as I was mentioning earlier, targeted VAT cuts initially. 
So to help, for example, the hospitality sector. And I'm sure there'll be a raft of, uh, of, of those to kickstart the economy in, let's say, September and October as we all come out of lockdown. However, importantly, um, w w as we all know, we're racking up astronomical government debt levels and, uh, and deficits. Now, that's got to be paid for. Now, the big change, as is becoming apparent, is unlike the 2009 financial crisis, that won't be paid through uh, through austerity, through spending cuts, because the uh, all governments are under crushing uh, uh, obligations to pay for unemployment benefit, company support, uh, VAT measures, as we talked about here, but in particular wafer, welfare payments. So supporting um, the health system, hospitals, uh, etc., and supporting uh, su uh, and support to the aged who need special protection and may be in lockdown. So the the model of 2009 and the austerity cuts won't be suitable. So what that means is governments have to raise more money. So we'll be looking at um, tax increases. Now we all know that VAT is very much is very much the favoured tax of the future. Economically, it makes a lot of sense to tax consumption and not to tax uh, wealth generation. So whether that's income tax, corporation tax, or uh, or savings taxes. Um, so the trend that we saw back in 2009 of VAT increases where the average EU VAT rate rose from about 17% to today's just sub 22%. I think we'll see a kickstart of that. And we can all, most of us in Europe can, can uh, unfortunately look forward to VAT rates of upwards of 25%. Uh, On the back of that also extension of the tax base. So uh, all these exceptions, uh, exemptions um, to uh, fringe products, Governments may use COVID as an excuse to tidy that up and extend the full standard rate uh, to that. And that would be backed up, I think, by my last point on that slide is I think some clever measures have been where governments have been able to um, uh, raise VAT rates or GST rates on uh, the essentials because it's a very, very uh, re reducing VAT on food, for example, is a very ineffective uh, welfare support system because it's giving a tax discount to everybody, the, the poorest and the wealthiest uh, too. So the cleverest schemes uh, and Canada, I'll call out Canada, they've got a great one. They give out vouchers um, to, to the less well-off, the poorest people's GST vouchers, tax vouchers that you can use uh, in, in shops. And uh, Japan attempted something similar to that. So I think the measure of extending the tax base backed up by um, some kind of VAT or GST vouchers for the poorest could be uh, the cocktail that we're looking for towards the future. Platforms, so that's the uh, gig economy, the sharing economy, e-commerce for goods and services, they'll become much more implicated. They already are, but I think measures will be extended there. Digitizing uh, VAT is an interesting one. Uh, so just looking to the UK as, uh, as a telling um, story on that, I think the UK, attempted or it has a plan to uh, digitize making tax digital all communications reporting from VAT returns uh, in corporate income taxes income tax returns right down to uh, inevitably sometime in the future transactional level reporting now if MTD had been uh, rolled out as first envisaged, envisaged back in 2015 had been rolled out by now uh, for all those taxes, the government would have been much more in a much stronger position to be able to understand taxpayer by taxpayer uh, in a very scalable, automated way who had what income when and who needed the most support and would have been able to target that through their digitized platform NTD. They don't have that. So it's uh, coronavirus, unfortunately, has highlighted that um, we need to accelerate digitization of that reporting. So I, I think a lot of governments will. Uh, in, in, in a year's time, we'll look at things like e-reporting and replicating what the UK was uh, trying to do. And then just lastly, we're going to need some massive uh, rethink of, of, of the VAT system. Tweaking with VAT rates here and there is not going to solve uh, our problems uh, that we're going to inherit out of once we come out of COVID with the, uh, with, with the economic crisis and the debt that that brings. So there's some real big sitting ducks, I think, for taxation. The one I've called out there is VAT on financial services. And e even before COVID, the beginning of this year, the EU had announced uh, a review on the VAT exemption that banking and insurance currently enjoys. So um, I think COVID will be used as a cloak 
to accelerate that as an excuse to uh, accelerate that. Other areas, the gig and sharing economy, there'll be acceleration around taxation of those too. Right, then just last slide, um, just some things for you to think about uh, in terms of, of your own planning. And obviously, uh, the first thing is keep a track of all the measures that are available uh, to you. Make sure you understand them, uh, especially if you're operating on a multinational level. So, so use tools like our uh, blog, our COVID VAT uh, tracker or anything else that comes to measure. It's always worth dipping back into your prior returns to make sure that you took advantage of all uh, 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 deductions as well. Now, specifically looking forward a little bit, uh, what, what should you be doing? Now, it, it, it's interesting. What we see in several countries is there is options um, around changing your filing period. So if you're on a, a monthly return, uh, sometimes if you are to speak to the tax authorities, they will flip you to a quarterly uh, return. And what that gives you is obviously a, a, a good a two month cash boost. You're able to hold on to the VAT for that bit uh, longer. So that's sensible uh, planning. An important one is uh, tax points. So pushing out when when the VAT is due on a particular invoice. And the one I was thinking about there when I wrote that was particularly around rentals, because what we're seeing is a lot of landlords realize that um, they, they won't they won't they can't they shouldn't and they can't enforce uh, monthly rental or quarterly rental payments so they're willing to give their struggling businesses um, some extra leeway now if you're in that position it's important to uh, engage with your landlord earlier and make sure invoices and agreements reflect that because uh, uh, VAT on rentals is like 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 most taxable supplies it's due the earlier of um, of when, when the rent is due or when the invoice is raised or what your agreement says. So that's a great example of really focus on all your expenditure and whether you can get the tax point uh, moved. Bad debt relief, I've already talked about. It's important you understand the existing uh, rules because governments historically have provided for very long periods before you're allowed to uh, recover the VAT you've paid on a, on a sour debt. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, governments are starting to introduce measures ar around this. It's important to keep uh, track of that. Then the next two points, uh, whether you're an importer or an exporter, there's a good chance uh, that your your country or the countries that you're trading into offer some kind of relief around that. So VAT deferment is uh, the option not to pay VAT when you're clearing the goods as they enter the EU which still includes uh, the UK until the end of this year. And several countries, Ireland, uh, one of my favourite ones, if you're a net exporter, then you can join special schemes uh, with the government whereby your suppliers don't have to charge you uh, VAT, which you would have to reclaim, reclaim through a credit. Um, I know some other, some governments are going to extend uh, those as well. And then lastly, um, something that we always, all of us overlook during the good times is, is the recovery opportunity. So whether it's domestic VAT that you haven't properly uh, recorded through your returns or it's foreign VAT, there are lots of clever WYSI tools, automated tools now available. Avalara offers some of them which are able to uh, crawl through your uh, your AP, your AR, whatever it is, uh, your accounting system and identify suspect uh, invoices. There's no better time and you'll make uh, no f you'll make you, you'll make no friends quicker uh, in, in the finance department if you can uh, promote uh, this. It, there's a lot of cash lying around at, at any time and it's it's more needed than uh, ever. Right. That's it from me. Hopefully this is. Uh, been helpful for you all and give you a quick uh, global review of uh, what what's going on. Thanks, Richard, for that update. Um, now we can move on to MTD. Um, we appreciate that many of you have been talking about and hearing about making text digital for VAT for some time now. Um, so we'll try to keep this brief and share the most recent updates. Uh, we'll provide a, a, an update on the recent um, deferment, do a quick overview of MTD, discuss what that means um, and what to consider next, and then briefly outline the work Avalara, Uniform, Millennium Consulting are doing in this area. So the big announcement um, regarding MTD is that the UK has delayed phase two of its Making Tax Digital for VAT. Um, this is the imposition of the full digital journey when completing VAT returns, uh, expunging any manual intervention. 
So in recognition of the massive challenges that businesses are currently facing, uh, HMRC have pushed out this measure for 12 months until the 1st of April 2021 for all UK uh, VAT registered businesses. One important detail to note is that those more complex businesses that were deferred in 2019 as part of phase two are no longer being offered the additional six months. They must also be compliant by the 1st of April 2021. And finally, the penalty scheme has also been pushed out to the 1st of April 2021 as well. So just a couple of slides to recap um, MTD for VAT. Uh, from 2019, this went live. The 2019 phase one requirement was a new way for businesses to submit the nine boxes of the UK VAT return to the new MTD API. The old way of submitting um, XML files or keying into customer gateway ceased and the MTD API connection went live 12 months ago. Uh, phase two extends these requirements to include digital record keeping, the digital journey, um, links between all financial systems holding that data, and the revised penalty system. We've just uh, outlined this in a diagram and want to revisit some key dates. Uh, from April 2019, MTD went live for most businesses, meaning they had to submit through the new MTD API for their first VAT period starting on or after the 1st of April. So monthly files were mandated to file from the, by the 7th of June and quarterly from the 7th of August. Um, following that, in October, uh, more complex businesses that received a deferment to the 1st of October 2019 uh, began filing their first returns from December for monthly filers and February for quarterly filers. And then finally, we have the Phase 2 deferment until the 1st of April 2021. This means that all, all businesses now have until their first VAT return period starting on or after the 1st of April 2021 to put digital links in place. Every business will still need to ensure that they are keeping digital records, submitting VAT returns via an API-enabled software, and maintaining all digital links that they, they currently have in place. Businesses are being encouraged to proceed with their new digital links procedures or to complete and make plans to put digital links in place now where that is possible. This uh, adjustment to the timeline was intended by HMRC to help those businesses who still had to incur cost or time um, uh, putting in full digital links in place and where the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic on their business now makes this part particularly difficult. Now to, to focus on the digital journey requirement, which has been the biggest change for most businesses. This requirement enforces that all financial systems have digital links to ensure an end-to-end -end digital journey from your financial system through to the software you use to prepare your VAT return. And of course, the digital submission to HMRC's MTD API. The um, implementation of digital links is to eliminate the manual intervention in the VAT return preparation process. You are no longer able to cut and paste. Um, what does HMRC mean by digital links? These include automated extract extraction, um, using spreadsheet formulas, downloading or uploading of files, uh, using CSV or, or, or XML um, imports. And, and as well as emailing or providing memory stick to outsource providers. The MCD penalty regime, which was meant to start in April 2020, has also been deferred to April 2021. These fall into three categories, fines and interest charges for late VAT payments, penalties for late submissions and failing to observe the uh, digital record keeping and digital journey rules, and then um, fines and interest for um, for failing for failing to make those uh, to observe those requirements as well. Uh, any businesses who are not making their VAT payments on time will um, incur fines and interest charges, and penalties and fines will be imposed for late submission and failure to adhere to digital record keeping and digital um, links rules. These are calculated on a points-based system, which is outlined here. I won't go through the detail, but you can receive a copy of. The sli this slide um, afterwards. 
And now I'm going to pass over to um, to Ruby for her to um, discuss, you know, next steps and things to consider. Thanks, Eileen. So, so what are the things that should be you should be considering now as a business? Well, as we have outlined, all UK VAT registered businesses must have digital links in place for the first return starting on or after 1st of April 2021. And Eileen's been through that in quite a lot of detail already. So some of the things that you need to consider, how, do you understand your current processes and landscape? So what ERP systems are in play? How many entities? What is your exact scope? And what does your digital, digital journey look like today? And are there any gaps in that? Have you actually chosen an MTD solution to support your full digital journey? If not, what are your steps to actually making that decision making process and, and who do you need to onboard within the business to actually help you do that? We have found that quite a lot of businesses that we're talking to are taking this opportunity to consider whether there is a wider indirect tax compliance strategy piece here. So not just looking at a UK MTD solution, but indeed thinking about whether the same solution should be used wider to um, help improve processes and also um, VAT compliance wider and beyond the UK. So we are having conversations with businesses that may be, say, prioritising the MTD side of a project, but still look, wanting to look at countries wider than that. And lastly, has the project been planned already? So some of the things to think about here, budget and costs. So have you put forward a, a budget request for an MTD project and, and has that already been approved? Do you have any idea of what the costs would be? And how do you actually pull that together if you don't know where to, be, to begin? So there's a few things to think about there. Uh, internal resource allocation. So typically for these type of projects, um, depending on who you use, there will definitely still be some resource needed from inside the business. And that is typically related to uh, procurement, IT tax, and also sometimes a little bit of project management as well. So they're the kind of internal resources that you need to think about. So what are the timings for a project like this? So um, have you given thought to um, how long would it take to implement and test this, how that, this fits into your own uh, resource allocation uh, and what is the lead time to actually kick off one of these projects and mobilise them with your chosen provider. And lastly, um, other ad hoc processes that may need to be taken into account. So uh, any vendor supply forms that you need to go through and also, of course, contractuals and legals, all these things take time. So it's just making sure that you determine when would you actually like to go live and what are all the steps that need to take place to get you to where you want to be. And then moving on to the next slide, this is um, a diagram really which shows how Avalor about reporting would work within a business environment. So typically we interact with an ERP or maybe multiple ERPs uh, and we submit directly to the tax authorities, not just for UK MTD, but, but we actually cover up to 55 countries currently and that list is growing all the time. So as you will see on this diagram, um, Unit 4 is the ERP listed and we've worked on many projects with Millennium Consulting. Um, in relation to UKMTD, what we would do is work with our automated extractor that we have for Unit 4. That is a structured output file that comes from Unit 4 and is brought into Avalor VAT reporting uh, very, very frequently, typically overnightly, to start building your VAT return um, in a real time basis so that you're able to start managing your compliance throughout the period, throughout the month of the quarter, rather than waiting until the 11th hour and the end of the period to actually start building out your VAT return. So there's benefits here of not just a full digital journey, but starting to actually manage your VAT return in a much more proactive fashion. We have uh, more than 160 data validations to actually improve um, the data in there, picking up things like duplicate invoices or where the VAT rate may look incorrect. Um, and after taking all of that, we can upload directly to HMRC ensuring that it is a recognised entity filing uh, with all the five touch points met, including retrieval of liabilities and also payments. There is a um, link included here where you can request a demo of the Unit 4 Avalor VAT solution um, should you wish to find out some more information. So that is everything we wanted to cover today during our presentation. As I said, Unfortunately, we couldn't get to Brexit today, but we have got a Brexit webinar and you can see the link to that here where you'll be able to get a lot of information that is Brexit relevant. So we've got some questions coming through, which is brilliant. So we'll try and get through as many of them as we can. Um, we, we don't have Richard available right now for Q&A, but we're going to do our very best on COVID-19 questions that come through. And if there are any we can't answer, um, we can ensure that you can follow up with him directly after today. 
Um, so now on to some MTD questions. Uh, first question that's come through is around how long does a MTD project typically take? Ruby, did you want to give an overview of that? Yeah, yeah, I can take this one. So um, with Avalara, our projects tend to take three to four months, I would say, from the point of um, contracts being signed. So from the point of beginning to start a project, it's typically three or four months, and that takes into account um, uh, ensuring that the um, mapping is done correctly, that testing takes place, uh, and that everything is in place to go live. Um, so we are finding quite a lot of businesses are still charging ahead with, with undertaking MTD projects, despite the deferral, just so that they're actually getting those projects done before uh, the perceived peak period that will perhaps be quarter four, 2020, and quarter one, 2021. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a long answer, but hopefully that, that, that uh, does answer that question. Thank you for the question. Yeah, fantastic. So really, you know, even though there is this deferment, you know, businesses need to start looking at, at uh, when they're going to start these projects. So, <laughs> so I'll let you take that one, Eileen, okay. if that's okay. Yeah, perfect. Um, so someone has, has said, you know, my business was deferred for MTD in 2019. Um, can you clarify when do I need to comply with phase two for, of MTD? Um, so as, as mentioned in, um, in the timeline slide, the deferment um, that has been announced is for all UK businesses to the 1st of uh, April 2021, uh, regardless of, of whether you've had the uh, deferment for complex businesses in, in 2019. So, um, you know, you will need to comply, all UK VAT registered business will need to comply with phase two of MTD from the, their first full VAT return starting on or after the 1st of April 2021. Great. So thank you very much for the people that sent those questions in. That is all the time that we have today for questions. There are a couple more that we will um, get back to you on directly. P please do keep them coming, though, if you do have any more questions, and we will ensure that we get back to absolutely everybody that's asked a question. So what are the next steps? So hopefully what you've heard today is of interest. We have a wealth of knowledge on our website. So if you are looking for some more information, please go there for some wonderful bedtime reading, such as our COVID-19 blogs and also guides to VAT legislation. Um, and once again, if you want to find out more about the Avalara and Unit 4 solution, you can also visit the URL that's um, listed here and we can request a demonstration with one of our consultants. And last but not least, the, the final slide has got the contact details of everybody that you have heard from today. And um, with that, we will conclude. Please do reach out to us if there's anything you've heard that is of interest or you'd like to find out anything more about UKMTD, COVID-19, Brexit, or indeed um, any of Avalora's um, offerings and solutions that we have in the market. Thank you for your time today and stay safe and take care. Thank you, everyone.